I'm Tom Colicchio, and this is my Meet Up With Meter. I'm cooking roast prime rib. All right, so this is a, a rib roast. You have, and great for the holidays. Uh, you know, if, if you're not into turkey, it's a great roast for Thanksgiving. It's also really good for, for your Christmas roast. Um, I'm just gonna trim it up a little bit just to trim some of the fat down. That's it. So this is about eight pounds. You have four ribs, so it's a four, uh, well, this is actually, yeah, four ribs. Uh, so it's about half the, in, of the entire um, um, prime rib. Okay. Put it in the roasting pan. And we're gonna give it a good amount of salt. It's gonna look like a lot, but keep in mind, it's not gonna really permeate into the meat and it's gonna help form a really nice crust as well. And then I have another spice mixture. This is uh, some smoked paprika, um, some chilies, a little maple, maple sugar, or brown sugar, and um, smoked paprika and some activated charcoal. So, okay. And that's it. I'm gonna cook this at a fairly low temperature, uh, looking at around 300 degrees, 325 degrees, somewhere in there. So we're gonna go really, really slow with this. Um, we're gonna add our, our meter to this, eyeball where the middle of this roast is, and that's where you want the tip of the probe. And so if you put your fingers right where the top is, and you know where the point is here, when you go to insert it, you just go insert it right to where your finger, my fingers were right on the, actually on the indentation. So we'll put it right in, and that should be it. And so now we know this is in the center of our roast, ready to go. I've had this out uh, at room temperature for a good probably three hours now, just to temper it. So I'm gonna set up the cook, and we're gonna go to beef, and we're gonna go to roast, and we're gonna go to rib roast, and we're gonna say medium rare. Now it has it at 135, which is the middle range. I'm gonna actually drop it back to 130. So you can manually change this just by clicking the arrows. So I'm gonna drop this to 130, which is gonna give me on the high end of rare, low end of medium rare, okay? And then we're gonna start our cook. My advice is get a meter. Um, um, I, I used to always cook by hand and I still do, but I, I started using a meter because it just frees me up. Sometimes I forget there's something in the oven and you'll get a reminder. Often what I do is I'll take a metal skewer and pierce the piece of meat and put it up to my lip and if it's warm, it's about right. If it's hot, it's overcooked. If it's cold, it has to go you know, a little longer still. Really not accurate. Again, I love the meter because it syncs up to your smartphone. Um, you can program a cook. It'll tell you when to take it out, tell you when, how long to rest it. And so there's a lot of different functions besides just having a, a digital thermometer readout. Oh, look at that bad boy. That's a beauty. So meat's out of the oven. Um, we're gonna let this rest. It's probably gonna be about a good 15 minutes to rest. That's a pretty large piece of meat. So we'll let it rest. Again, right now, if you were to cut this, all the juice would just end up on this cutting board. So we'll take our time. The bigger the piece of meat, the longer you have to let it rest, obviously. But the meter will tell us. So right now, I pulled it at 119. Um, and it'll, this should carry over to 130, which is, again, on the, on the low side of medium rare. So it'll be between medium rare and rare. If you take, you know, the scrap pieces, uh, you know, cut it up, chop it up really fine, and make hash out of it. Especially if you have potatoes left over from the night before, you take the potatoes, chop them up, add the beef, chop it up, you put it on a griddle, maybe some onions, some garlic, some herbs, make hash, crack an egg over the top of that, it's delicious. Or you could simply just let it get, you know, put it in the refrigerator, it gets nice and cold, and you could slice it in for sandwiches. It's roast beef, right? Our meat is rested enough. Now, again, we have four bones, so we could do we could do a couple things here. We could cut it just like straight down and get four very nice portions bone attached. But I'm, I'm gonna take it off the bone and Tiki loves those bones, right Tiki? Yes, she does. So we're just gonna keep the knife up on that bone. So you, so you see how my knife was angled down, so it was actually scraping right along that bone.
So now we have our rib bones out. So now you can actually make slices. You make them however large you want. So if it's six people, you can make six slices. Obviously if it's eight, you can do eight slices. But I'm gonna just kind of make it nice. Cut it. Okay, that's, that's just beautiful. So again, what you're seeing here, it's all red out, it's, it's rested now, so the juices have kind of flowed out to the, to the outside edge. Okay, if you look at it here, you can see it. Beautiful cook on that rib. Nice and juicy. I'll kind of give the old, uh, look at that, yeah. That's the, the, the meter squeeze, right? That's known as the meter squeeze, all right? And look <laughs> at that, the meter squeeze. What do you think, Tiki? Tiki says, Dad, that looks great. And now, if you have anyone in the family who loves to gnaw on bones, my wife does. This is her favorite part. She actually has to fight the dog over this. We have our, our bone that you can just kind of... Mmm. Delicious, Tiki. That's a pretty good bone. Mm. Now, Tiki knows that when she gets a rib bone, she has to eat that outside. She makes a mess inside, right? 